This is a video analysis of Funky Cracky, a member of my Discord server. You can check his channel out in the description. If you'd like a replay analysis of yourself, you can join the server at this link or click the link in the description. I'm uploading this publicly because I feel the tips can be applied to others in the diamond rank. However, not everything I say should be taken as absolute truth, as these are just my thoughts on the gameplay. If you'd like to add to the discussion, feel free to do so in the comments. Okay, so you can be quicker to the ball, and you definitely beat them to this, but you want to make sure your hit is controlled. So you don't want to just make a hit that gives them the possession directly back. You want to make a hit that keeps the ball somewhat near you or your teammate. In this case, it would be best to maybe hit it to the side or single jump and get a powerful hit on the net. You, I think, double jumped here, and that just gave them the ball directly back. And uh, in this situation, maybe you want to just rotate out because sticking with this ball is kind of difficult for you to do anything useful with. I mean, you do get a nice double flick here, but at the end of the day, it really just held them off when really you could have just rotated back and had a similar effect. So in the corners, I would typically rotate out. Good job giving yourself space here. Okay, clear to the side. Good job. So I feel like you rushed this touch just a little bit. You could have made a more controlled touch here. And it's difficult to say if you'd be able to score this or not, but I think if you maybe gotten a soft center, you'd at least give your teammate a chance to go for this. And I don't know where he is. I can't really check because I don't have the replay, but slamming it over here is probably not your best option. Okay, so right here, it's a pretty good center from your teammate, but you have to recognize that it's not scorable just yet. You know, you want to wait until this guy completely misses the ball or gives away the ball before you make your move right here. Because the only reason you should be going up here is if you are going to absolutely score this ball. There's no way you're going to be able to score this because it's directly above the post. So you want to wait this one out, be prepared for his touch, and don't get too greedy for the goal. Alright, so I know you got a touch here, but... You want to be careful about challenging because I don't know if you're necessarily last man here. Your teammate still might be recovering. So you either want to play this really safe and lead this ball. Or if you do challenge, you want to be jumping really, really early so you can get to there at the same time. You get there a little bit late and it forces an awkward hit. It could have been much worse, but in this situation it worked out because it did center for your teammate. But it's a bit of a gamble if you were to go for this. Uh, you probably want to be more patient in a situation like this. Wait for the play to happen. Seems like you're trying to predict things a little bit. Like you came a little bit too far to the left here. You probably could have been going a little bit slower. You want to control your speed more. Wait for them to give it away. And that might be something that'll help you out a lot is if, if you're in a situation like this where the other team is scrambling a little bit like here, you don't need to be going full speed. You can be slowing it down a little bit, waiting, taking your time, and the ball might end up in a situation where you can actually do something with it. And you don't, the last thing you want to do is speed past it because you're so focused on keeping your speed up. So since you don't get the touch you want here, you're better off just leaving this ball than feeling pressured into making a touch here because whatever you do in this spot, it will be a pass to the other team. And more often than not, I think it'll lead to a goal or at least a good scoring opportunity for the other team. And then following after this with your boost, it's really just a waste of boost. Again, you're going too fast here to make a useful play. I think slowing down here is a better option. You want to wait for this guy's touch. He's definitely going to have a hit. You just want to be in a good spot to follow it. And I'd say here is a good spot because this is likely around the area where he could hit the ball. But if you're focusing on just keeping your speed and just getting all up into his space and just kind of lunging at the ball, you're likely not going to make a good touch here. So instead of focusing on your speed, you might want to slow it down and wait the play out. And then you can control the ball. Good dunk from your teammate. Really nice air roll attempt. And again, you're going too fast here to accurately read the play. So you end up backflipping because I think you recognize that you're going too fast, or at least it forces you to try to adjust right away in the air and that forces the backflip. So in this situation, slow down just a little bit, wait for this bounce, and then you can make a touch. Probably even a good shot on net that could result in a goal. But since you're focused on going too fast here, you just missed the touch entirely. I think it was fine to go early for this. I think it was scorable. I think there are some good packs you could use to practice these kinds of shots, but typically I think you'd want to air roll to get your car in the best possible position to put this in, but not a bad idea to go for this, I think, even if you didn't get the touch. So 
so this was a lot more awkward than it needed to be. When you're rotating back, either rotate far side here or challenge right away. So since you're right next to the ball and your teammates backed off, or actually let me make sure you know if your teammates backed off here. Yeah, you can see your teammate going back to your net, so you should recognize that you're the one who needs to challenge this ball. And maybe if your team, if you didn't know where your teammate was, or if he was going to aggress this ball, you could always flick your uh, ball cam indicator to check where he is. But you should know here that he is back, and you have to be the one challenging this ball. Now it's okay if you back off, because it's not necessarily a dangerous position to be in, but you have to choose. Are you going to challenge this ball, or are you going to rotate back post and let your teammate get the signal that he has to go for it? You kind of just follow the ball here and then you're forced to make a awkward touch on the back wall. And it was a decent touch, but you don't have to make it that difficult for yourself. Okay, here, I don't know how often people hit this kind of shot at these ranks, but it looks like he's obviously going for a ceiling shot here. So you want to honor that at the very least. I don't know, again, like if he's going to hit it, but just in case he's a mechanical god, you want to honor his touch, wait it out. But as soon as you recognize that it's time to move up, Let's say now you've recognized he's not going to hit this. Notice where his teammate is. Notice where he is. You don't have to hit this ball. You can, or in the air, you don't have to hit this ball. You can wait this out. You can take it on the ground and control it. Get a 1v1 situation maybe with this guy. Or 2v1 if your teammate moves up with you. And this is something that's difficult to recognize maybe in diamonds when you have the option to control the ball. Now diamonds are okay at controlling, but I think a lot of times they do give away possession more than they have to. And that is one of the key steps to ranking up is getting better at recognizing when you have that space, when you can control the ball. It's not a bad 50-50, your teammate's kind of far away. <laughs> okay, so it looks like you faked the shot and you just rammed his car. Nice, 200 IQ. So your teammate does eventually come in, get a nice almost goal here, and this should be a goal for sure. So what happened here is you trusted your teammate's touch too much. You always want to assume your teammate is going to lose a challenge. So instead of turning up field like this, uh, you want to wait this out. So before you turn up field, make sure it's a favorable touch. And even then, when you turn up field, and he hits it like this, you don't have to touch this ball. You can back off, and that would be the best option here. So either back off or make a touch towards their back wall. Notice how you're forced to kind of turn away from the ball and frantically try and hit it the way you want, and you don't really get the touch you want because of that. So if it's a little awkward for you, you don't have to make this touch. The last thing you want to do is make a touch that gives them possession. So if you're not 100% confident that you're going to make that touch, then back off and you will not be in a dangerous position. So luckily they did miss the open net. Teammate gets a clear to the right. So at first it looks like you're positioning for a pass from your teammate. But there's no way at this point right here, you're so far away, there's no way this ball is going to come to you. Even if you were in a better spot for a pass, this is mid diamond, I believe. So you don't want to expect that kind of thing to happen. I don't see a lot of people pass even at champion level games, especially in 2v2. So I think supporting your teammate is a more viable option. And what I mean by supporting your teammate is staying behind him in a good position where if he loses the challenge, you can immediately follow it. So notice as you're about to make this touch, both of these guys are backed off into their corner and making a hit here is just going to give them possession once again. So you could dribble this ball and maybe try and get a flick, but the important thing here is that you wanna be controlling this because you have the space to do so. Now this hit wasn't bad because they weren't ready to deal with it, but you don't wanna always count on that being the case. Good attempt on the follow. And good finish. So you do win this kickoff, but ideally, I think you want to try and have some boost saved up when you go for kickoff. I usually do a front flip kickoff and save about 12 or so boost. So now when you're going for this ball, you have no boost to really do anything with it. And I don't think it's a good idea to linger here because first of all, like I said, you can't really do much with zero boost. And second, you don't know what your teammates plans are. And typically they will not be good decisions at this rank. Your teammate will make some really weird decisions about when to go for a ball. And that's why I think he went for this one. It wasn't a great idea to challenge this for your teammate, but you shouldn't be up there either. You want to play this a little more safe, maybe get some boost. There's not much you can do here. So they do hit it into your area. Right here, I would have just rotated back post. Let him continue to roll this along the wall. You're not in any danger. Your teammate's going to be covering the net, so he'll probably be the one stepping up and intercepting this ball. 
you don't have to feel pressured into making a touch right here. If it's ever really awkward, you don't have to just quickly churn and hit it. You can instead rotate back post and your teammate will be probably in a better position to deal with it. Yeah, notice your teammate was right there. If you had just left that ball, it would have just rolled right to him. So instead of going for a read here, you could be getting on this wall and getting a touch instead. Sometimes when the ball is going this slowly, you have time to go up the wall, save some boost, and get a much better touch. So be careful as second man pushing up like this. You don't want to be ahead of your attacker. And it could have been bad if they were to aggress this ball and hit it towards your corner, because then you'd both be caught out of position. So good job creating space for yourself, but you created a little too much. So once you path away from this ball, there's a point where you want to stop pathing away from it. Because at this point, right here, there's no way this ball is going to come to you. And I think your best position would be more behind him, closer to his side of the field. Not directly behind him, obviously. You never want to do that. But a little more supportive around here on the field. That being said, you are able to catch up to it, but you could have had a clean beat on this guy if you were closer. Uh, be careful as last man going for these challenges because I'm sure in some situations where you've done this, it has led to a goal. I know it's definitely happened to me and definitely every other Rocket League player, so be careful challenging a second man. So this is a really quick and kind of panicky churn you make here. So it's good to create space here, but you want to be creating space a little bit more away from where the ball is going. You're still following the path of where this ball is going to go. You want to be kind of pathing away a little more out from it so you can have that space to hit this to the side. But even then, the way you're positioned, it's still okay to take your time and hit this to the side. Doing a turn like this is not going to be consistent. I think a lot of times if you were to do this turn, you'd probably make a really bad touch because it's an awkward like 180 drift you're making here. So I wouldn't count on that and I'd focus more on giving yourself space to like turn in and hit this ball rather than trying to do a 180 and hitting it. That's a good rotation there, but you do get a little too antsy. So you're driving forward like he's definitely going to get a touch here. And it's reasonable to expect it, but at the same time, you want to be patient. So wait for this touch to be made. If it gets past your teammate, then you can turn in and make your own hit. So wait that one out a little bit. Don't be too hesitant, obviously. That's not what I'm saying. Don't be hesitant. But there's certain times where being patient is just the best option. And I think this is one of those times. Good hit. You caught him out of position, but make sure you don't just follow the ball here. At this point, you want to be already preparing for his next touch. So don't go straight at the ball here. Go a little bit more to the side so that you can churn in on this ball and get another dangerous touch. Because now that you're facing just straight at their wall, you can't really do much useful with this. It is a nice kind of center here, but I think most of the time you're not going to get that touch by coming in like that. I think you can control it more by coming in from the side. But it was a good sensor, nevertheless, and your teammate should have been there, not getting your boost in the back corner, but oh well, not that big a deal. Okay, you have a lot of time with this, so you want to control it. Good pop to yourself. So I think flipping here hurt you. It kind of puts you into this area where you have to make a really quick churn all of a sudden, and you can't really make the touch you want. This is another one of those situations where you don't really know who's challenging the ball. Only this time you can't really tell where your teammate is. So this is a key situation where you want to flicker ball cam. Make sure your teammate is either right here or somewhat in this area or if he's in net. Because here you're both backed up expecting the other guy to challenge and you could have been the one turning in and challenging this ball once you realize that your teammate is far back from it. So looking back at this clip, I realized that you actually did flicker the ball cam, but I noticed that your teammate was a little far away from the play, so I think you should have maybe tried to get in the way of this just a little bit, maybe a fake challenge, and then back off. And flicker again just to double check where he is. That's a really good 50-50. And it's cool. So this is a good touch onto the wall, but following it could use some work. So I would go into training and just work on your wall touches. I think you're going way too fast here. You want to slow down, jump off the wall, and then air roll and focus on where you're going to hit this ball. You can get a much more powerful touch and it'll feel more like you're calculating where you're going to hit it versus you kind of just jumping off the wall and hoping that you somehow get a hit here. 
Alright, be careful about going for boost here. You don't really know what's going on in this play. You've turned her back to the play, and by the time you get this boost, it could be coming down this way. And it's already kind of an attack for them, but it could be a lot worse. And you've risked that by going for the boost. So in this situation, your teammate is recovering still, and you need to be the one attacking this ball. So you don't want to be waiting for this, because if he were to hit this double touch, you'd be screwed. Or his teammate hitting it. So what you want to do is either double jump or fast aerial here to hit this to the side. Or when you get more comfortable with the wall, you can go up on the wall and deflect this to the side. But you have to be the one jumping for this and hitting it to the side. So maybe work on uncomfortable saves. There's a training pack for that. Or just work on your wall touches. Uh, but the last thing you want to do is wait here in net because you're risking that double touch here. And I don't know how often they hit it at this rank, but at least in future ranks, when you're higher up, you don't want to give them this but they both double commit and they both miss and should be a game right there a huge part of ranking up at this level is recognizing when you can make more control touches there were plenty of times throughout the game where you had the opportunity to dribble or keep possession but instead you gave it away focusing on this should give you a lot more scoring chances each game People like to say playing faster is one of the biggest factors in ranking up. I'd say this is true as long as you're making quick decisions and keeping your momentum, but there are times where you need to recognize where you should slow down. Sometimes you had too much momentum to make a play, and other times you could have waited for the opponents to give it away. Always try to keep some momentum, but don't use it to force challenges. Make sure you're supporting your teammates on offense as much as possible. Also, don't feel pressured into challenging everything. If you're last man, be defensive. If you don't think your touch will be useful, maybe fake challenge and let the opponents give it away. Make sure when you're rotating that you know exactly where your teammate is so you can position accordingly. Also, rotating back post helps your teammate know when he can challenge. All of these mistakes are very common for diamond ranks, and focusing on these three things helps me personally hit champ. I think your mechanics are fine to be at this rank, so just improving these three areas should take you and maybe a lot of others at this rank pretty far. And obviously the best way to practice is to just keep grinding. Hope this helps.